Welcome to the Realty Plus Real Talk series where we talk to industry experts to know their honest views and opinions. And today we have with us Mr. Amit Ramani, founder and CEO of Office Space Solutions that is revolutionizing the co-working office space ecosystem through technology. Mr. Ramani, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you, Zapna. Glad to be here. Mr. Ramani, flexibility now is the buzzword in the office space industry and most companies are looking uh, at it as the best way for their expansion plans. So how have you seen you know, the tenants' uh, role defining the new office landscape and what is the impact on the landlords, the investors and the space operators? So, uh, Sapna, clearly, I think if you look at the tenant side, I think we all kind of in the commercial real estate industry are focused on delivering for our clients, right? Essentially our tenants and occupiers. And that profile has somewhat shifted, right? I mean, uh, the tenants uh, clearly, uh, at least from when it came to the co-working space, uh, we started off with the startups and uh, SMEs taking this on a big way, then mid corporates came in. And now clearly in the last 18 months, the big enterprises uh, have taken on the whole, uh, you know, co-working flex uh, in, in, in a big way. So that creates a whole different uh, opportunity and a landscape uh, for, for all of us. Second, what has changed is that clearly hybrid and distributed work is kind of front and center for all occupiers of all scales. And to that end, what is happening is that the whole idea of one location that uh, satisfies a city is kind of now getting distributed, right? So having uh, just one location or a centralized location uh, that will still probably continue. It will have uh, a centralized uh, smaller footprint, but the other locations which will enable the employees or their ultimate uh, occupiers to be able to work near home are also being helped by the, uh, the, the tenants, right? So as a result, in-city uh, distributed work, which is a, a central location, smaller footprint, distributed work happening in work near home locations through satellite locations, which typically are uh, being provided by flex operators. And then a small portion co will continue to work from home. Now in the distributed work, also what has happened is that the tier two cities have become a, a, a part of that distributed work. So people went back to about eight or nine large cities, tier two cities, and there basically now the occupiers or the tenants are also looking to provide some sort of a uh, base. So that's how the tenant profile is changing and obviously is creating a much larger opportunity for flex and co-working operators. So how has this behavior impacted the investors, you know, the investors in the office real estate as well as the landlords of uh, office real estate? Yeah, so I'll start with the landlords because those obviously are clearly, uh, you know, have changed their approach, right? So clearly what we see um, you know, pre-COVID, uh, we were about 50 odd locations. Today, we are touching 132 uh, locations. Out of that 132, almost 100 plus are in partnership with the landlords. And the landlords, at least with us, right, are seeing this as a partnership model because our sizing of our centers is a bit smaller. We do about 20 to 30,000 square feet. So they're seeing this as an amenity. And I've spoken in the past also about our relationship with Prestige across 14 locations, our relationship with uh, the one international center, which is uh, Nucleus Office Parks and many others are in that direction. So they see it as an amenity and as a partnership and they are the hardware and we are the software. So working extremely well to that end. From an investor standpoint, Sapna, I think uh, the investors, um, obviously there's a lot of euphoria of the uh, the e-commerce e and uh, the, I would say, new age tech businesses. I think uh, the investors are certainly showing keen interest. Uh, we are not in the market to raise capital, so I really can't tell you, uh, you know, if there's keen interest. We, we, we have uh, funds for our growth, so we are not in the market. But clearly there is investor interest because uh, what the investors are seeing is that ultimately offline and online has to coexist, right? And in this industry where you have people that have to come into an office to get some of their work done, um, will obviously see a large uh, portion uh, getting curated in the flex space because people are not looking to invest their own capital and lo are looking for more of a pl plug and play environment. Okay. So as and when demand increases in an industry, as large opportunities get curated in the industry, investor interest is sure to come in. 
So right. So what Mr. Amani is uh, Mr. Ramani is saying that one is the enterprises are now the biggest occupiers of flexi spaces, um, distribution of office spaces now, um, and uh, again. Uh, the collaboration between the land um, uh, asset owners and the co-working space, as Mr. Amani said, it's more like an amenity within that space. And uh, mo most importantly, the investors are, uh, in fact, one of the industry studies also said that the most global PE investments have been in office uh, real estate. How is office uh, managing its tenant expectations? So, Sapna, we have a customer first approach. Um, last study that, uh, you know, independent companies had done on us and the industry, we had the highest net promoter score of 80 out of 100, right, at that stage. So, uh, from our standpoint, I think uh, we are, because we've always been uh, customer focused for us, I think the tenant profile changing has not impacted uh, us in any significant fashion. Today, uh, we built the whole engine of the operations by providing the best customer service. And we want to continue to do that by giving the highest level of service and standards in the, in the industry. Uh, what has changed though, is that because a lot of the managed offices are now coming in through the enterprises, the level of expectation uh, is changing uh, a bit because I think the expectations that the occupiers or the ultimate employees have off of the large IT, ITS enterprise clients is the same which is expected out of us, right? Uh, so for example, a smaller cohort size, uh, a startup might have a bit different expectation, but as you get into managed offices, their level of expectations are a bit different. And to that end, what we did, Sapna, is we insourced all of the facility management functions because I might have a couple of teammates which are managing, which are my community managers, which are managing uh, the, the front of the house. But reality is there are 20 plus people in each location between the guards, housekeeping and pantry services, which basically is where the experience uh, you know, has to be stellar. So we insourced all of it. Today, we have close to about 2000 people uh, that we uh, are in, in that in that blue collar space that we provide. So we want to completely have the end to end control of the experience. And to that end, we have the project management uh, team in source. We have the obviously our operations team was always in source. And now we have the office care team, which provides facility management is also in source to ensure that we can give a stellar experience to our clients. Okay, okay. So that, that kind of gives better control over how, how properties are managed. That's right. That's Another aspect uh, of co-working is the technology part. In fact, uh, during the pandemic, you had launched uh, an integrated platform office at home. How are you seeing technology now altering the entire, uh, you know, the model of workplace? Yeah. So, Sapna, I think the technology for us is in three parts, right? One is the front end of it where we uh, engage with the customer. So it could be our visitor management system. It could be our uh, app, which is integrated with Arugya Sothu, gives the uh, you know vaccination status of our uh, you know or the the occupiers or community members. Um, it is our touchless uh, you know access to site, touchless ordering. All of those elements is our complete technology stack that has been there for almost a year and a half now, right? Which provides a front end connect point of the uh, user and the space, right? So I think that is uh, fairly well, well sorted. In terms of the second part is essentially how we manage the hygiene and the safety of the space. And there we have an office care app that basically provides the complete roster of who's, how many people are there, uh, how many people are going to be uh, of the frequency of cleaning, the frequency of sanitization, et cetera. The third piece is on managing the backend infrastructure, which enhances the, uh, you know, reduces the carbon footprint and enhances the experience uh, for our users. So it could be energy management, it could be temperature control, it could be motion sensors for light management, um, meeting room access, etc. So that infra piece is the third piece, and all of it comes together in our office app to basically provide a stellar experience uh, to our customers. In terms of just in time of use of space, our app from the day one has been providing the ability for people to book a meeting room or book a seat for their use. Today, that meeting rooms, number of meeting rooms are almost 600 across uh, India. So uh, anybody who wants to use that uh, on, on the fly can do that. Then what we have also done is for our uh, clients, specifically uh, some of our clients, we have 
and white label the product. So this gives you rostering, which means that if you know you want to bring in people on a certain days of the week, they can be done. It also gives the access of buddy system, which basically tells you that you know when Amit and Sapna, for example, are going to be uh, in the workplace, and so that you can have a better collaboration uh, and brainstorming uh, for 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 those days when they're there. Um, so these are, and then we have a seat map where you can select your seat and so on. So all these of these are, can be customized by the companies who uh, who are taking this. Uh, to some degree, yes, Sapna, uh, but these are white label products, they're standard products. So the customization can be to the extent that it looks and feels like a specific client's, uh, you know, app, but uh, the back end of it is somewhat, uh, okay. you know, uh, already, already in place. Okay, all right. So that's the standard format, but there is some level of customization that people can work on or their uh, individual company level or the enterprise level. There has been, you know, you also have said that the uh, flexi spaces has a bright future and a lot of studies have come out that they are going to grow rapidly in the next few years. But what are the challenges that you see, which are, you know, the co-working or the flexi spaces is facing and might uh, continue to face going forward? So Sapna, I think uh, one uh, depends on each of the you know operators, right? I mean, each operator has a bit of a different model. I can speak to our model, right? Our model is much smaller centers, 25 to 30,000 odd square foot in each location. And we, as I told you, we have 130 going to 200 this year. When you get into that level of complexity of you know operations, there is uh, bound to be a, a, a bit of a you know, a uh, growth challenge that will happen. And because our uh, centers are much more, so from getting them live to managing them on an ongoing basis, but I think we are confident because we have done this in the past. We have managed multi-city operations. We have the teams of 250 plus people. We feel confident that we can do that. Second, it's real estate. So when you get into any uh, real estate transaction, the level of uh, compliances, the level of uh, approvals that you need could be anywhere between 10 to 20. So that is the second level of complexity, but clearly, you know, uh, being, being in this business for six plus years, uh, we have understood how to, how to overcome some of those uh, pieces. I think the third piece, which was very uh, specific to us, we were a B2C to a B2B business. We were serving cohort sizes of less than 25 seats to, you know, a thousand seats. Now in the smaller cohort sizes, when the first wave and the second wave happened, it impacted the business negatively and we lost a lot of the customers. But today, uh, I, I, with, with that's the demand that's come back the fastest because clearly, you know, the enterprises are still sitting on the fence. We all read about it that, you know, people are asking, you know, employees to come back to office uh, and that whole discussion is still on. But for, if you look at the smaller court size of less than 50 seats, those guys are back, lock, stock and barrel. So I think though we did have a negative impact when the challenge was there with the first and second wave, but those have been come back the fastest. So clearly, you know, it tells that the strength of the model is between B2C and B2B. Okay, okay, fantastic. But at the industry level, do you think there are certain challenges that need to be addressed from all, you know, at the industry level? So, uh, Sapna, I think uh, I have requested this in the past budgets also. I think clearly uh, because we are now almost, I would say, 5% of the total real estate industry uh, and probably projected to grow to about 15% in the next two to three years, um, clearly I think we should get infrastructure status. Right. Um, second, I think, uh, you know, uh, 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 because we are supporting the growth of the new age economy. Second on the GST, I think 18% GST, again, uh, at the end of the day, it's a pass through, but ultimately the customer is paying for it. So I think that probably needs to be revisited uh, and, and probably a lower GST rate would certainly be helpful. And then also on the tax detected at source, because we are uh, a, a, a quasi real estate uh, extension, our tax deducted as source uh, should be much lower in the one to two percent range. So I think those are the th three industry requests that we have put out to the government. Uh, hopefully, there will be some traction there. All right, all right. And also, you have always maintained that tier two. You just now also mentioned that tier two cities are the next uh, areas of growth for flexi spaces for office spaces. How do you see, you know, um, looking at your experience in, you know, uh, uh, being present in uh, metro cities as well as tier two cities, how do you see the city CBDs and tier two cities uh, behaving in terms of supply and demand? So, uh, Sapna city CBDs are rocking right now. Uh, 
right? If I look at any tier one city, uh, Bangalore, Pune, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Delhi, NCR, Kolkata, uh, Chennai, I think uh, they're rocking because technically, if we look at it over the last two years, the supply uh, growth, uh, you know, got much slower, right? So there will be a demand and supply mismatch. So clearly the tier one city CBDs are rocking and you can see that in, um, you know, the rental and how, how they are appreciating. Uh, on the tier two city, it's a very interesting scenario. Till two years back, rarely people talked about, you know, tier two cities. Uh, but today, if you look at the environment, there is more demand for tier two than there is supply. So there is going to be some pain over the next, I would say, you know, 12 to 18 months till this demand and supply mismatch kind of gets curated. I'll take a simple city like Jaipur. If you look at Jaipur today, just as a single operator, I have a 5,000 seat demand running and I have availability is probably less than 1,000 seats in the whole of Jaipur, right? So that is happening in Indore, that is happening in Lucknow, that is happening in Coimbatore, that is happening in, um, you know, Kochi, that is uh, probably uh, happening in Indore and so on and so forth. So I think clearly we are seeing a demand and supply mismatch in tier two. I think it will be 12 to 18 months before that problem gets situated. 12 to 18 months. So there is a supply and demand mismatch in both the areas, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, the supply is is definitely and uh, which also indicates that the potential of this sector is huge. It's immense uh, to uh, while going forward. Another, um, you know, uh, in recent past has you know the, the development has happened is the ESD. Now uh, most of the companies investors are now focusing on ESD when they are selecting their assets, uh, especially the real estate assets. What are the implications you see of this on the office space demand? As you mentioned, tier one, uh, two cities has the problem of the supply of the right kind of uh, infrastructure. What implications yeah. do you see if the investors and the uh, the companies themselves are more ESG uh, focused and driven? Yeah. So, uh, Sapna, I think uh, as um, you know, we have a couple of top investors in the country, Chris Capital and Sequoia, who was on our cap table. So ESG uh, is a given for us, right? So all of our properties have to be fully compliant and uh, we get audited uh, every year. So, um, you know, from that standpoint, there is no exception, at least when it comes to AWFIS properties, right? We have to be fully compliant and ESG compliant. Now, when it comes to tier two cities, wherein it, these ESG compliances are not in place, we have to work with our uh, landlord partners to get them ESG compliant. And we are doing that actually in one of the properties in Jaipur, which was uh, you know, not compliant. And we are uh, mandated today to make it 100% compliant. Um, so it's not a choice, it's a given. A um, lot, lot of the top occupiers in this country uh, will not go into properties that are not ESG compliant. So we don't have a choice. Uh, it's a given that we have to deliver uh, the, the ESG compliant properties. And so the space operator and probably the, the landlords will have to work together uh, for, for that. What are your, you mentioned about uh, cities like Jaipur and Indore where you are present. What are your expansion plans, both in the CBDs and probably the tier two cities? So Sapna, uh, as I said, we were 50 locations pre-pandemic. We are currently 130. By December of 22, we will be over 200 locations. Um, in terms of, you know, we see this not as a square footage approach, right? I mean, uh, rarely do you ask a McDonald's how many square footage you have, you figure out the number of outlets, right? So we are very clear. If you think about fast food, you think McDonald's, when you think about work, it will be AWFIS. And we will be there in every city that is of any commercial interest uh, for the country. And uh, clearly expansion, we are doubling our scale in the tier one cities as we speak. Uh, we will, uh, because the base is uh, small in tier two cities right now for us, we will probably go three X our size. Each of the locations in tier two will at least have anywhere between four to five locations uh, for us. In the tier one cities, they will, each of the tier one cities will have 20 plus locations uh, of AWFIS. And what is the kind of business model uh, you would be following for these expansion plans? Uh, so, Sapna, our model has been fairly uh, straightforward. As I said, almost 75% of our properties are in partnership with the landlord. It could be either profit share or revenue share. 
and uh, you know to that end i think we'll continue with that model and uh, we feel that that's the only way to grow uh, because it is a win win for both the operator as well as the landlord partner um, we have operated in uh, what i would call is uh, primarily non institutional space there are still grade a properties grade a minus properties but they are typically with hnis and uh, you know family offices and uh, you know non institutional landlords we have done a few institutional deals as well as i mentioned prestige and nucleus office parks uh, we will continue to balance the portfolio 700 million square feet in this country is with non institutional landlords and that's where we feel there is a big opportunity to help partner and curate those properties and bring them into fully compliant properties that could be offered to you know grade a plus occupiers um, so we feel that's the model to go forward and we will continue our expansion in that model as we go forward that's right given the scale of properties that you are mentioning with uh, with the non institutional players and you know curating with them working with them i think it's a win win as you rightly mentioned for both the parties for uh, the operators as well as the land owners you also mentioned about how pandemic had kind of give, you know was a big blow for a lot of industries and co working was one of them taking lessons from there how do you feel that you know how to future proof co working uh, spaces so that they do not become outdated they do not become obsolete how do we future proof this sector yeah so sapna i think pandemic was a big uh, lessons learned for everybody and specifically for office i think we uh, learned three things out of it one um, you know you have to be flexible and nimble in your business so you be, need to be able to you know adapt to the new reality right so clearly when uh, managed offices started becoming mainstream we were the first ones off the gate to go after that demand and we were able to generate right second our customers were kind of forced to work from home so we launched office at home uh, which has done about almost 12000 uh, we have sold smart desks and chairs in the last uh, 18 months third uh, a lot of our um you know a facility management was outsourced and when our partners decided not to pay those blue collar workers we insourced all of it 600 people today we are touching almost 2000 people in in that business so i think one is you have to be flexible you have to be nimble you have to be ready to uh, pivot uh, and and to adapt to the to the new reality second i think uh, was you know doing doing right by the customers right i think we did that and uh, not just our customers but also our stakeholders which included our landlords as well and our employees and uh, we took really good care of our employees and our customers uh, by providing them flexibility discounts deferments whatever it took uh, but we wanted to make sure that uh, we understood our customers pain our landlords pain and worked together as partners to deliver and uh, you know the the outcome and that's the result that we have built completely rebuilt in fact uh, we are uh, apples to apples as of march 21 Uh, and march 22 exit run rate we are almost 60% higher month on month in terms of our business so i think it's done extremely well and the and then the third piece which is uh, sapna very important is adaptation to the customer need be it in terms of design be it in terms of their technology requirements be it in terms of you know their ability to have a distributed work i think that was extremely important as i said our network was about 50 centers today we are touching 130 so really if you really think about it um, you know any customer that thinks about work and when they want to go uh, work near home or want to work from a central location we have to be that port of call for them so the ability to adapt to our customers need it's very hard to predict how the customers will behave but that adaptability to react to our customers uh, be it at the design level be it at our network level be it at our technology level i think was very important and i think those are the three lessons that we learned out of the pandemic fantastic so what mr ramani is saying flexibility first of all to change with times changing times you also change uh, with that uh, adopt new models collaboration with all the stakeholders whether it is your landlords it's your customers uh, and uh, adaptability to customer needs agility to quickly uh, adapt to the uh, changing customer needs and technology as you mentioned when the time was there you uh, you know uh, launched a technology to help the partners so these are some of the things which can help make uh, you know your co working assets future proof 
So going forward, how do you see you know co-working scene in India probably next five years? Uh, where do you see uh, AWFIS in next five years? So uh, Sapna, is, as far as the industry goes, as I said, we were two and a half percent of total uh, industry before pre-COVID. We are touching about five percent right now. I think we'll be somewhere in the fifteen percent uh, to twenty percent range in the next five years. It will become a significant portion of commercial real estate and as a solution that uh, you know the occupiers and the tenants will look at it right um, as far as awfis goes um, our speed of growth has gone three times uh, what we were doing we used to launch about 5000 seats in a single year today we are launching 5000 seats in a single month so uh, you can totally see how the pace of growth is happening uh, in the next uh, you know uh, I can talk about three years because five years is too long uh, of an horizon, but at least from a business standpoint, in the next three years, uh, we will be close to about 400 centers, uh, 20 odd cities in India, and we will uh, you know, continue to have the number one position in terms of the co-working oper operator in India, uh, and uh, we want to continue to maintain that position uh, for us, um, and we want to be the largest uh, you know, network of uh, office spaces, and obviously you want to be the most loved brand by our customers. So that's the focus for us in the next three years. That's right. So future looks bright. Um, Mr. Abadi, you are the veteran of the industry and uh, eminent leader of this sector. So before we let you go, what is your advice or, you know, your uh, piece of wisdom for the new entrepreneurs in this sector? So, uh, Sapna, I think uh, there has been a last 10 years has been a very interesting space for startups in uh, India. My advice would be, you know, focus on first principles, build a strong build business that, you know, satisfies the customer's needs, um, be ready to adapt because, you know, every business model has gone through a tremendous shift over the last uh, two years uh, of the of the pandemic so adaptability is key uh, but look at what what you can solve for the customers and build a business that is built on first principles um, because ultimately those are the only businesses that will uh, be built in in, in the long term uh, so don't look at the short term uh, look at the long term on you know businesses that are built on profitability businesses that are built on you know high customer uh, net promoter scores businesses that really solve a need in the marketplace. So I think that's the fundamental advice that I would have for budding entrepreneurs. Okay. So think long term and provide solutions for the customers. So that, that is what is going to take you forward. Uh, that's the advice of Mr. Amit Ramani for our young entrepreneurs in this sector. So thank you so much, Mr. Ramani, for sharing those views about the industry uh, and for your advice for our young uh, generation of entrepreneurs in the sector. Thank you so much for being here. With us. Thank you, Sapna, and thank you, Reality Plus, for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you.